Hey folks, it's Jared Mananen from the website TahoeTrailGuide.com. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about waxless cross-country skis. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the scale pattern on the base of most uh, typical waxless cross-country skis. Recently I was asked a question about how to treat those bases. The person contacted me to inquire about how to treat the base or if there's something you could do to the scale pattern of a waxless cross-country ski in order to prevent snow from clumping up or sticking to that grip zone. The problem with waxless skis, and this is a problem since they were first established, the, the scale pattern type at least, is that waxless only means you don't need to use grip wax or kick wax, but you still need to use glide wax. And kind of the funny thing about the scale pattern bases on waxless cross-country skis is they do benefit from having a little bit of glide wax applied. Maybe not dripped on and hot, hot waxed or ironed onto the scale pattern. I wouldn't ever recommend that. However, when you're waxing the tips and tails of your uh, waxless cross-country skis, I definitely recommend taking that brush that you're brushing out the wax from after having scraped it to brush over that scale pattern. That will put, apply just a little bit of glide wax to those scales on the bottom of your ski and that will help prevent some of the uh, snow from clumping up on the bottom of that if they were really dry. Now various waxless skis have different types of material for the scale pattern. This pair of skis that I'm using right now, it has a pretty typical kind of a P-Tex type base to the tip and tail, but then on the actual grip zone here, it's a completely different material. But that's not to say that that material doesn't collect snow uh, under the right circumstances. When it's fresh snow that's highly saturated, and uh, it's just really sticky. It's great for making snowballs. It's also great for collecting on dry, uh, dry bases of skis. So I definitely recommend putting some type of a glide wax, just the thinnest layer, and you could use a uh, liquid glide wax. You could use a paste wax as well. But either way, you should be doing something to the bottom of those skis. Um, to help prevent that snow from clumping up into the grip zone. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, here's a perfect example of snow collecting to the scale pattern of the ski. Although I treat the bases, so it does shear off relatively easy. Now don't judge me, because this ski looks like garbage, I know. However, it is my rock ski, and you can see I've skied over some rocks. But most importantly, I want to show the ashen white and the dry looking area where it's kind of grayish. That's where snow is going to collect the most. Now this is a before and after of brushing that scale pattern with some residual wax on a bronze brush. And you can see it's already getting a little bit more black and shiny. The mate ski to that pair is in the foreground and here I am applying some paste wax and you can see that it is getting black and shiny as a result of that. You could ski as is at this point or you could wait a few minutes for that paste wax to dry a little bit and then brush that out like you would the rest of the ski. Here's an example of a very oxidized ski which will ultimately collect a lot of sticky snow. And then here's an example of a ski where the scale pattern was brushed after hot waxing the tips and tails. I appreciate you sticking around for this long. I hope you were able to get something out of this video. If you have any questions, comments, critiques, criticisms, feedback, whatever, post it in the comments. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me some thumbs up on my videos. Watch some of my videos. Tell your friends about my videos. Check out my website, TahoeTrailGuide.com. appreciate you being here. I'll see you next time. fresh snow that's kind of saturated. Whoa.